before we turn this on, let me, I got some um, midterms here. Let me just uh, see if you're here. I can turn it back to you. Win tune. Can we come get up. Eric Swanson. Ni Liu. Robert James. Greg Gibling. Richard Chang. William Sang. Beverly Wang. Wong. Michael Liao, Farzad Escafi, Jonathan Voilm, Happy Sin. I've got yours up. <laughs> I have finished grading. Okay. Um, June Cognitive radios that we're having this week, and so uh, you know, describe it to you sometime. A eh? we get applications at the end of the year. Uh, any questions? I guess the projects are out. Yeah. Uh, can I go with the project? Do you somebody have it printed out? I actually haven't seen it since. Too many capacitors. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll do that. Um, so, any questions about it? Well, what? What? Yeah, what? Uh, they, uh, the double the signal ended, um, the transfer. How do you analyze it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, but nothing about the, the project itself. I mean, you understand the specifications. Basically, it's same project you had last time, just with frequency response is kind of the the strategy here. So, uh, um, okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. I'll redo that. What I did last in the last uh, lecture. I think in order to simplify these problems, okay, what you need to do, okay, let, let me just, let's just start with um, a two-stage something or other, okay, two-stage amplifier. And this circuit won't work, but I think it may be just. Let's say you had two stages designed like, like this, okay? Two common source stages. This is a ground here. This is an AC ground up here. So how would you analyze this thing? What's the way to go after this, okay? In fact, let me put a, a source resistor in front of this, okay? So we have V in here and V out. So the first is how many poles you might have to worry about in a circuit like this. And like I said, there's not a direct correspondence between uh, each node in the circuit and how many poles you have rigorously, but it's roughly true, okay, in the signal path. You know, nodes in the signal path. I mean, we don't care about nodes outside of the signal path. We care about nodes in the signal path. And so what would be the poles here? Well, you sort of have you have a node on this front side right here. That's got sort of the input pole to this circuit. Since we have a source resistance, we're going to care about what capacitance we see on the input here. We're going to have a pole associated on this output here, and we'll have another pole associated on the output of the second stage. So it's kind of one, two, three poles likely in this circuit, roughly. And you know, how do you figure out where they are? 
and I, I mean, I told you there's kind of there's two things we sort of do. It's sort of like voltage division or um, reducing the output resistance. And actually, reducing the output resistance and voltage division are the same thing. I mean, let me just review that for a second. Why that's true? We do our little uh, two-port analysis, okay? So let's put two two-ports together. Um, let's call this AV times VN, and this is VN across here, and this is um, AV2 is AV1 times V. Let's call this V out 1, which is equal to V in 2. And here's an output resistance. Okay. And <coughs> so let's not have these just be resistances. Let's make these impedances. Okay. And so I can, this input to the next stage can be all the, you know, this, that includes. CGS here, right? Or it can conclude this CGD, which is the gate to drain capacitance, and we can fold it and we can have it as an effective resistance to ground, right, by using the Miller approximation. Okay, so this thing here is going to be this output of the first state. I probably can't see it, I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm looking at this here right now. So here's two resistances. So I'm talking about this one here, which is kind of Rn of the second stage. Well, R into the second stage, usually we think of it as being infinite when we go into a MOSFET, but now we've got capacitance there, right? So this guy right here, let's call it Z into the second stage, really not an R now. And Z, Z in is looking in to this second stage, so it's the impedance looking into this node here, okay? And what is Z in in this circuit equal to? Z in will be equal to... Okay, 1 over J omega Cs, okay, it would be the capacitance here, right, in parallel with 1 over, you know, of course, J omega, J omega Cgd times 1 plus A of the second stage, right, so that'd be, of course, parallel combinations of capacitors are just adding the capacitors together. The reason I want to write it this way is, okay, well, I'll show you why I want to do this in a second. Okay, so this is Z in, so we just take all the, all the impedance in that node and put it in parallel, okay? Now, what's this thing right here? Well, this value right here is going to be R out of the first stage, okay? So one way I can analyze this is calculate the voltage on this node as a voltage divider between the gain of this first stage and this output resistance of the first stage. So I can write this as, let me start right here, okay, let's call this V in 1 prime, okay? So this is the, after the resistor, the input resistor here, because there's a voltage division going on between here and here as well, right? So let's start right here. So we have V out 1, is the, is the voltage on this node right there? Well, what's it going to be equal to? It's going to be, we, and that's this voltage right here, V out 1. So I could do it as a voltage divider between R out 1 and Z in 2. So what is that? The voltage divider there is um, R out 1 is equal to, let's call this transistor 1, this transistor 2 is equal to R01 parallel with R02. Okay? So it's going to be equal to Z in 2 over R out 1 plus Z in 2. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Um, times this, the gain of this stage, okay, times AV1 times V in prime, which is the voltage across right here, okay? Begin one prime. Okay, so this this is kind of using like two ports. We sort of 
all voltage dividers, right? So there's a voltage gain of this first stage. It has an output resistance. The second stage loads down that output resistance. So we have a voltage division between the, if this was an open circuit here, right, if we didn't have capacitors here, we would see the gain of this first stage as the input to the second stage. But since we have impedance, which is now these capacitors on the second stage, we're going to get a voltage divider from this output resistance of this first stage into the second stage. Okay? Can we see that? Yes. Is the mic. Yeah. Um, in the first stage, you have some Miller capacitor at the input and the output. Won't the output Miller of the first stage affect the input capacitance of the second stage? Right. Okay, good. Uh, that, that's a good point. Okay, so yeah, where do I put, where do I include, right, so there he said there's a CGD here, so where did I have that? I didn't put this in, so let's call this, this transistor 3, I guess, and 4. So this is CGD3, CGS3, and he's talked about having a capacitance off of this node right here, okay, which is the Miller capacitance looking into here, which is going to be a CGD2, okay, plus CDB2, very good, all right, you're going to get them all, okay, so right, there we go, okay, right, exactly, okay, so that's the capacitance here, so where does that get included in this little picture? It's going to be part of the output resistance of this first stage. So instead of R out 1 just being this, it's going to also be then in parallel with 1 over J omega C, J omega C, D, B, 2 plus C, I can't see it, C, G, D, 2. Right? So R out of this first stage here is going to be R01, R02, and then the 1 over J omega CGD2, CDB2, and CGD2, okay? All the capacitance to ground. So that, that comprises the output resistance of this first stage. Make sense? Is that okay? All right. Just take everything to ground from that node, all right? Take everything to ground from this node. Okay, so this is R out 2. Okay, now, so I, instead of R, R out here, let's call this... This should be Z, Z out 1, I guess, right? Z out of the first stage, okay? So I'll put this Z out 1 of the first stage. So, so we have voltage division from the output resistance of this first stage and the input resistance of the second stage. It's all impedances now, times AV times VN. Now, we can plug in, and now this... AV1, okay, is, going, is equal to what? So let me replace this as Z in 2 over Z out 1 plus Z in 2. And AV1 is equal to what? It's going to be equal to GM2, which is GM of this transistor 2, times Z out 1, which is Z out of the first stage. Okay, this is the out of the first stage. Right? That's the gain. Right? So it's Zn2 times Gm2 times Z out 1 over Z out 1 plus Zn2. Look what you can do here. Let me see if I can show this to you. <laughs> Zn, let me go out a piece of paper here. Let me, re let me redraw that. It's going to be messy here. So I just, so V out 1 is equal to Zn2 over Z out 1 first stage plus Zn of the second stage, okay, times Gm of transistor 2 times Z out of the first stage. Notice Zn2 times Z out 1 over Z out 1 plus Zn2, what is that? That's just, I could rewrite this as the parallel combination of Z out 1 in parallel with Zn2, right? So in other words, a way to do these problems, and I think this is the much easier way to do it, is you go right to this node, you take all the impedance to ground that you see on that node, and that's why the Miller multiplication effect is important, because it can, this guy right here, which couples across the second gain stage, you can't, that's more complicated, right? You just can't say that it's in parallel like that, so you've got to have the effective capacitance to ground. You calculate all the impedance, so it's R0 up this way. In fact, there's some more capacitors, right? 
Aha, you missed some. There you go. So there's another one right here. So there's C, D, G, 3, right? Plus C, D, B, 3, okay? This capacitor, well, that's, uh, yeah. If I kind of call this to go into ground, okay? Because this is an AC ground. Okay? So you take all the capacitance on that node to ground, all the resistance on that node to ground, and you include to the set next stage as well. So just go everywhere you can. And then that, so then basically it's just GM of this transistor right here. And you have to calculate big, big it's really big GM of this first stage, really. That's what you really want to use here. So let me actually do that. So it's big GM of the first stage, whatever it is, times ZO. Everything it's seen on this node, and consider the output, everything connected to the next stage and everything associated with that stage. See what I'm saying? So, this, so the, basically, the two port idea is one way you can, sit, you can think of it as either an output resistance being loaded down by the second stage input impedance, or you can think about it as just everything on this node can, is part of the output load of this first stage. If you know what big GM is, you multiply times that output, big, all the output impedance on that on that node there, and you've got the gain, right? Minus this, well, GM's equal minus equals the gain of the first stage, which is the gain from here to here to that node. Right? And for this circuit, GM1 is equal to minus GM of transistor two. Okay, so we can just plug in. Yes. Um, for the Differential input is single-ended. Yeah, I'll do that. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, you're going to do that? I'll do that next. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I just want to get this squared away. So, I mean, what you got to do is go into the node, figure out all the impedance to ground, include that as Z out, multiply by the big GM, you got the gain of that stage. Do the same thing here. Go over here. Find all the output impedance in this stage. You have the input voltage at this point right now, right? So then you just multiply and then figure out the gain from here to here, multiply those two numbers together, and you got the gain of this whole thing. Okay? Yeah. What if, what if for some reason we can't get a capacitor to ground? You're sunk. <laughs> it's really tough then. I mean, if you can't get it to ground, uh, it's it's the whole. That, you saw those formulas that I came up with, right? And so you just you got a mess on your hand. The way you get it to ground is you start making approximations. You sort of say, okay, why can't I make it to ground? It's because well, I think. The gain of this second stage is a big capacitance out here. I can't use Miller multiplication. But then what you'd say is, if there's a huge capacitance out here, and you can't use the Miller multiplication formula, you use the fact that you know that this pole's at a very low frequency, so this point is like a ground. So there's no Miller multiplication this time, but it still goes to ground. So I, you can always get it to ground. You may have to use a different approximation to get it to ground. What happens if all these poles are right at the same sort of frequency? Then you run spice. Right? I mean, it's just too messy to deal with at that point in time. You really can't do it. Right? Okay. So you take the best approximation you can. You see what comes out. Then you get the. the like I said, I'm hoping for answers within you know factors of two or three or four. Right? You know that's that's good. Right? And so I mean these things when they're when they're right at the same pole frequency, you're going to get an answer that's off by you know 30 or 40 percent probably. Right? So you're you're still pretty close. Right? If I get that, so basically go to each node, calculate the impedance. Okay, let's do the uh, double single ended conversion thing. Okay, so now. The question is, how do you analyze this little guy? Okay, so let's put a load capacitor out here, and that includes, you know, all sorts of other stuff, right? It includes. Let, no, let me not put in all the CGDs and all that kind of stuff. Let me just put in some big capacitors here that we can, you can use the pro appropriate prox appropriate proxim approximation to get it to ground. So let's put a capacitor here. Let's call this transistor one. Let's call this two. 
let's call this C load one, C load two. <coughs> okay. Um, now, let's. What's the from this V in plus this is V in minus, okay? Well, let's make it which equals V in differential over 2, and this is equal to minus V in differential over 2. We put a diff pure differential signal into this thing. Okay. Going from, let's. Uh, <laughs> I can include this VS thing here. Uh, I'm going to say something here. You can redo this again, but let me kind of call this like a virtual ground, okay? No. Oh. <laughs> oh, you, you don't want to do that? Yeah. You don't want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 can't do that, okay. You're right, you're exactly right. Very good. <laughs> Glad you remembered that, right? Okay, so, okay. Um, it's a lot messier than the math. Let me give you the, okay, we can, if I go through, let me just show you what the answer is roughly, okay. <laughs> uh, then we'll go back and we can put in the, uh, the other stuff here. Okay, let, let's do it. So let me, I think the big answer, then we can, I'll, I'll set up the problem before you do the other, okay. <laughs> I can only get partial credit, that's true, I agree. <laughs> From here, to this output, let's say there's a pole 1 plus j omega over omega p2, okay? From here to this output, the, the problem is, of course, what, what you're after is, there's actually a component of this that kind of works its way around through this loop right here as well, right? Yeah, okay, so that, that's what I don't, but let me get without doing that for a second. So one path is from here to there, we get, this is times gm, you know, sort of GM over 2 because this is only half the voltage on this side. So this is the path from here to here. There's another pa path from here through here over to here as well, okay? And what's that one? This one is GM1, and this kind of, there's a gain from here to here, okay? And there's a pole associated with that. And this is, let's call this transistor 3. So there's a pole associated 1 plus J omega over omega p, let's call it 3, okay? Omega p3 is the output impedance on this node, which is going to be approximately 1 over gm3 in parallel with r01, okay, roughly. So that's going to be approximately equal to 1 over gm3 times cl1, okay? So there's a pole from here to here, which is pretty far out because this is a low impedance, okay? Then there's, we got to get from here over to here. Well, this, the current coming from what I just calculated right here, right, is mirrored over to here. So it's going to see this pole as well. So the path from here to here sees two poles. It sees the pole from here to here, that one, and this same pole over there, GM2 over 1 plus J omega over omega P1. Okay? So now, the sum, what we see at the output here, is really the sum of those two. So I got to take, you know, GM of this, of this whole circuit, okay, is equal to GM of the first stage, GM1 over 2, 1 plus J omega over omega P3 times 1 plus j omega over omega p1 plus gm of the second stage, gm2 two over 2 over 1 plus j omega over omega p1 or omega p2. I get the wrong thing right? Omega p3. This is omega p2 here, I'm sorry. So, this pole, one from here to here, that's omega p1, let's call it. I don't know what I do here. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so omega p3 is the pole from here to here. Omega p1, one, no, it's omega p2 from 
on this node right here, right? So the note pole associated with the output impedance on this node, I get omega P2. Output impedance on this node, I get omega P3. And this is omega P2 then. Okay, so I end up with something like this. GM1 equals GM2. I'll fix that up in a second, okay? GM over 2. So I end up with the sum of these two poles. And we factor out 1 over 1 over 1 plus J omega over omega P2. So it's going to be 1 plus 1 over 1 plus J omega over omega P3. Okay? This equals GM2 times this second pole. I, mul I put this over the common denominator. What am I going to get? I'm going to get 2 plus um, J omega over omega P3 all over 1 plus J omega over omega P3. Okay? So putting this over the same common denominator, so I multiply this by that, and you know, I get a 2 up there because this 1 plus that 1. Okay? Well, I need to get this always in the form of 1 plus something, so I've got to factor out the 2. So I factor out this 2, so I get a 1 here and a 2 omega P3 here, and I bring the 2 out front. The 2's cancel. So I end up with two pole, a pole and two poles and a 0. One pole at omega P2. Omega P2 was the pole on this... Or was mega P2? Mega P2 is the output pole, right? Times GM times 1 plus J omega over omega P3. That's the pole at this node right here. That's the one with 1 over GM. And a 0. Which one's pole 2? Pole 2's here. And pole 3 is there. I got rid of pole 1. Right. That was a mistake when I had them sitting around there. Yeah. So, okay. And a zero at one plus J omega over two times omega P3. Okay. So I got, so let me, let me plot this out. So I have, so let's, re, let's review what this is. So I have a zero, omega zero at 2 omega P3, and omega P3 was the, the GM pole, right? That was 2 times 1 over 1 over GM 3 times C load 1, okay? And that was the pole on this node right here. Then I have two poles, omega P1, which is equal to off plate in. Pardon? No oh, I slipped in there. Mega P2. Sorry. Mega P3. Yes, right. Mega P3. Mega P3 is right here, right? So Mega P3 equals 1 over 1 over. Oh, no, no, I was actually I was defining two poles. That's what I was trying to say. Um, mega pole A, right, <laughs> is 1 over 1 over GM. This is the whole transfer function, CL1. And mega pole B is 1 over the output, which is Z out 2 or R out 2 times or R out 2 times C L2. Okay? I'm just I'm just numbering all the poles. One there's th one zero and two poles. So I got I have a zero right here, and I got two poles. So here they are. Here's a zero, here's a two poles. Okay? GM3, right? Because GM3 is setting, it's the output impedance in this node here is GM3, right? I'm looking up into this node right here. This is transistor 3. Right. Okay. So the poles are 1 over GM3 looking up into here. There's a 0 at twice that frequency. Okay. And then there's another pole associated with the output. So this pole zero pair 
is coming from this extra path here that has another pole in it. Okay. So what's going to happen here? So if I plot the Bode plots of this thing, this is pretty far out. So I'm going to get first. I'm going to get hit this pole here. I'll hit omega p b, which is sort of the output pole of the whole circuit. And then I'm going to hit another pole at this one right here. Looks like okay. Then I'm going to hit the zero here, which is going to flatten it out again. So this is at mega p a. Then this. So now I'm falling off at you know sort of. I'm falling off as omega here, one over omega. I'm falling off as one over omega squared here, and then I'm going to fall off as one over omega again. After above the third, above the second zero here, or the first zero, mega z. And it's twice this. So here's where zeros can come from. Zeros can come from two parallel paths which have different transfer functions. So if you have a path this way and a path this way, those two things can end up with a zero pole pair, which is kind of a very different, it's almost mathematical how it falls out, right? It's not like feed forward from the circuit. It's, a, it's the mismatch of these two sides that gives you rise to this other pole. Okay? Now, now you want me to do the other part? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what I got to do here is when I do this first one, I have to look up into here, and I see looking up into here, I see a one over GM one. Okay. So the GM of the second stage really isn't GM two, right? What it really is is GM two. So what is the GM of this transistor right here? How much current is right there? Well, it really is GM. Two with half of the voltage over one plus GM two times one over GM one, right? Because this this was degenerated. This on this side here we have a degeneration of, from this one over GM one of this transistor right here. So the GM at this point right here from this voltage. That I see, because it's only half the voltage here, right, is going to be G. This is equal, these are equal. So it's going to be GM2 over 4. Okay? So instead of having, and this other, that current's going to mirror around like we saw before, so we'll have three fourths of the current will go through this path. So I'm going to end up with something like this instead of before. Instead of having, let's do the second part. GM two over four times one over one plus J omega over omega P two, which is the output pole, right? Plus three fourths of GM one times the two poles, right? And I'll just give me a different factor up in this numerator here. I won't be a factor of two. It'll be something like Three fourths, or something like that. So I'm doing. So I'm just all I do is figuring out the current that's going to this output. I'm calculating big GM. Short this out. Calculating big big GM from here to here. I get because this is degenerated by one over GM. I see only one fourth of GM to this output here. Coming from here, I'll have that same current ends up going through here, gets mirrored, comes down into here. So I see that one fourth coming through this path. Plus, I see another GM2 coming from this transistor right here. So I get three fourths of the current going in this path, and that three fourths will see this. Will see this second pole. <laughs> Blank. <laughs> what did I do there? Do I want to do that again? Oh. All right. <laughs> you still want to do feedback? I can see what's going on. Right? I'll do it again. I'll do it again. Let me let me review what, what I'm let's let's forget the poles for a second. I think maybe that's Okay, so this goes into a current source, right? So this is like an open circuit. Let me calculate I out. How do I calculate I out? The way I calculate I out is this is minus V input differential over two, this is plus V input differential over two. 
there's a current source sitting inside here, right? And so when I calculate sort of the GM of this stage, looking at its source, it sees this open, it sees this current source down here. It also, let's call this transistor 1, let's call this transistor 2, okay? Looking up into here, what do I see? 1 over GM1, right? far as this side's concern, what is, what is that 1 over GM? What I really have is a degeneration of 1 over GM1. I'm trying to calculate I out. All right. So I just redrew this little part right here. So it's degenerated. Transistor 2 here has a degeneration of, one, of the input impedance of 1 over GM looking into its source. Okay, with that? If I look into the source of a common, this is now, this, we're including this being like an independent source, that's like a <coughs> common, it's like a common gate, right? And the drain resistance is 1 over GM3, let's call it, let's call it transistor 3. So if the source resistance is low, like 1 over GM, then you see 1 over GM of this transistor looking into its source, right? If this is really high resistance up here, then you see something higher down here, right? What you need to compare is if the source, if the drain impedance resistance is much less than R0, then you see pretty much 1 over GM. Remember that formula? It's RD, the drain resistance here, plus R0 over 1 plus GM R0. This is Rn of a common gate. Okay. So, this is now like degeneration. So, what is I out from this side over here? This is minus VID over 2. It's going to be minus VID over 2 times GM of 2 over 1 plus GM of 1 times 1 over GM2. This is this degenerated transconductance of transistor 2. Right? And the current we're going to see out here due to this side here is going to be, so this is, I'm calculating what I out is, right? So it's going to have one term that looks like this, right? This term right here. Everybody see that? So I'm just calculating the output of this transistor here with this VND over 2 with a degeneration of 1 over GM1 in its source. Okay? Let's see some yeses. Okay, a few yeses out there, right? <laughs> All right. Okay. Then now, the tricky thing about that is that current, which is equal to this, right, is actually in opposite. It's in this. It's it's okay. So. Um, I guess, well, this actually is I out. I mean, this, this current I just calculated is downwards, right? But since I have minus here, it's going to be a current that's going to go upwards, right? So it's for I out's concern, it's current in that direction, okay? So this current here is coming out of the drain and goes right into this output node here. So that's part of I out. But that same current, which is now in, which is in this direction, has to come from somewhere. It comes from the source. Where does that come from? Well, it comes from over here. And it comes from there, and it finally gets to ground when it goes in through this transistor right here. But that's mirrored over to there, right? Let's call this I O2. I'm just calling that current I O2, okay? So I O2, it's the, it's the current from this drain here. It ends up coming through here, goes through up to there, is mirrored over to there. So IO2 actually ends up coming down through this transistor and into the output as well. So is it IO2 coming from the bottom transistor and in fact that it comes around and gets mirrored on the other side there? So I see this same current again, right? What? Do you not use that big arrow configuration to kind of, are you saying IO2 goes upwards this way 
And then you're saying R2 also comes down or that's the direction of the current. Yeah. You lost count of the direction of the currents? Yeah. Okay. So Okay. So IO so w what direction is this IO? Let's call this equal to IO2, right? Right? Positive. What direction is that in? IO2 positive, I guess I'll have to change it around then. So this it's going to be going upwards, right? If that's positive, it's going into I this direction here. So let's call that IO2. Okay, going in and equal to, it's in the same direction as I out. Then there and it's got to come into the source, same direction there as the going out in the drain. And it's got to come down here, it's got to come down here, come over here, and it's in the so and both end up going into I out. So I out is equal to 2 times I O 2. Actually, there is no 3 fourths then. I guess I was wrong here. OK, thank you for. It's 2 times I O 2 plus what we see on this side, OK? Now this side, same thing happens, right? I have. Um, Here's the gate. It's degenerated by this. The drain current, so there's an IO1. So there'll be a 2 times an IO1, just like IO2, for the same reason, right? This is degenerated by 1 over GM of transistor 2, et cetera, et cetera. And I, the drain current gets mirrored over here. This current comes right out of here, so it ends up with 2 times I01. Is the current now going Current? Yes, right. So the current's going like this. Okay, so it's going downwards. It's going down. So this is positive. This current's going down. It's going down here. It's mirrored over to here, which means it goes into I out. It's coming in like this. It's got to go up through here, and it's got to go right into I out. Okay. So there's two paths to the output. They see this. I think there is a three fourths because no, it's not. Because that one doesn't see the second pole. So this, you know, I got this. So there's one, one half of this sees this pole, sees this extra pole, one half doesn't. One half of this sees the extra pole, one half doesn't. So gives the answer that I just showed before. Okay. Can I go on? <laughs> what? I just calculated. Now, so here's. Okay, so. All right. Well, I mean, so the question was, some of this current saw the the um, two poles, and some only saw one. I mean, wh where are these poles coming from? The poles are coming from the fact that I got a current division going on here, right? I have a C load 1 here, right? So what's going to happen, instead of all the current going into 1 over GM1, some of it's going to go into CL1. So I get a current divider between CL1 and this 1 over GM3. Well, that'll give me a pole at 1 over GM3 times CL1 when I go up through this path, right? And that's that pole that I worked with before, right? Because there's a current division. This current here goes through CL1 and also, you know, the part that goes into this transistor 3 is what we want. The part that goes in CL1 is lost. So that's, now we end up with a, it's a current divider, so that'll end up with a pole. All right? Yes? Can I get, what is I out 1? Okay. I out 1. I out 1 is going to be equal to GM1 looking this way. What impedance do I see? Tell me. What is it? One over GM2. Right. So I see looking here, so I see a one over GM2 looking in that direction. So that's degeneration of transistor one. So I have a one plus GM1 times RS of G transistor one, which is one over GM2. All right. No, I've shorted this, remember? I'm calculating oh, big GM. Yeah. 
That was close. <laughs> I had to think fast on that one, right? <laughs> okay, right. Okay. Right. So this comes out, and there's VID over 2 is the voltage we have driving that. So I end up with VID over 4 times GM of 1. Right? This is 1 plus 1 is 2, VID over 2, so I get 1 fourth. Okay? And half of that current goes through this path, doesn't see this pole, half of it sees a pole. You might, okay, is that quite true? There's actually some capacitance here. So there's another current division going on, right? But this is, if this is really a high impedance here, right, all this current's pretty much, well, it's actually pretty much the same set pole, I guess, actually, because we're looking up into here, so. Yeah. More complicated. Yeah. So what? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, the GMs are the same, right? What's the point of all this? Notice where these poles are. Fortunately, they're sitting way out here, right? I mean, this is out at one over GM, you know, three times CL, right? It's that's where this pole is, and this one's at one over R out of this stage, right? Times C load of two. This is going to be a R out is a huge number, right? Compared to one over GM. So this little pole zero doublet thing is sitting really pretty high frequency. The point of all this was it's more poles and zeros beginning to show up, right? I mean, and uh, and it's coming from this mismatch thing. So this is getting to a little bit of this issue we talked about. Do you count every pole? Every node doesn't have a pole. Well, there's a bunch of ways the poles and zeros can begin to show up. Mismatch of two paths is one way they can sort of show up. Okay. The most important thing about this is this output pole, right? Yeah, I think that's really the because that's the lowest frequency one probably. Poles that are up around one over GM. There's a lot of them. They're going to be up around one over GM, right? You just hopefully they don't give you trouble. Sometimes they do though. Okay, any other question about that? So, the way to do these problems, way to calculate. So, I mean, in your projects, you just need to calculate the lowest frequency poles. What would they ask for? Just the, in your CAN calculations, the lowest two poles, or what did it say? Or just calculate 3 dB frequency? So you just got to calculate the lowest pole. So all these ones that are higher or sitting way up there, you don't really have to care about them. You've got to figure out just what the lowest one is and work on that one. It all affects everything? <laughs> the stability problem. The stability problem will need to calculate the second pole. Okay? That's coming up. You only have to do the lowest one right now. Be thankful. Okay, right? Soon enough, you'll have to do the second poll, right? That'll, that'll come up next. Yeah. Sign problem three, guys. How did you guess? You got it right. <laughs> exactly right. Then you've got it all done. Then you really are designers. You can really do op amps, right? That are stable. <laughs> you can do op amps now that are unstable. You can do oscillators. That's what you could do now, right? <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I think I've been. You call that filibustered, right? <laughs> you don't want me to do feedback, right? <laughs> okay. Let's, um, you want to take a break? Let's break, 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 break. <laughs> I was trying the project over the weekend. Okay, good. And I was just stuck in calculating all these things, and I was like, oh, wait, all right, this is too complicated. So, what do we. Are you, so we Go after the. Can I just ignore? Yeah. I just ignore it. those and just calculate the pull at the, R, at the output. Calculate the lowest frequency one. That's all you care about. So, that would be the one at the output because you already just went through all the ones more over GM. Yep. Okay. And what I was wondering also is, like, how do you increase the. Uh, the, so two questions. One, how do you increase the 3 dB bandwidth? Look and see where. Uh, well, how would you do it? Well, smaller I mean, resistance or something. So, I mean, smaller capacitors. <laughs> right? 
Well, you got right your circuit right now has to drive this 1k ohm thing, right? Well, that 1k ohm sit on the output. So that's a pretty small resistance. So you probably don't have much of a problem on an output pole, actually. It's probably pretty high frequency. Okay, so it's going to be an inner one. It's going to be the inner one. It's going to be the one driving that. Those, those, you have those big transistors that are driving that output. Right. And those are big gates. So that's where your pole is going to be, right? And if you last for a lot of gain on that first stage, you'll have a lot of gain. That means you have a high output also, impedance. I'm right? like also like a common uh, gate thing, which gives you lower impedance. And that kills the gain in your first stage, though, too, right? Huh? And it kills the gain in your first stage. Common gates that cast, well, it looks into one over GM, right? This is your second stage? Well, no, actually, that's going to be my third. Oh, your third stage. The problem is, you got to worry about that driving that output. So you probably want to have a buffer in front of that output. That probably would, would help you, right? In front of the output? Because, so you have the output stage now. you got that all designed, right? Whatever it looks like. I don't know what yours looks like. But, you know, some something like this, right? you got some common source. Yeah, okay. This is huge. This is a really big transistor. So you probably need to buffer that guy, right? So that the first stage gain doesn't get killed. Right. Again. You pro the pole go? I mean, the pole here is still pretty high. Well, now it's now you got this is a really big transistor. Okay. So this has got a lot of capacitance on it, right? Big Miller capacitor, big CGS. Okay. Now, if you go right to your high gain stage right here, which has a big R out, okay, it's going to see all this capacitance here. You got a big problem, right? If you buffer that with some sort of circuit, a little source follower, this capacitance will be a lot lower. Right? Remember this problem, the CGS doesn't show up because yeah, it's yeah. a source follower. This then can drive the second stage. And you got a lot lower capacitance here, so you can get the pull a lot higher. So we should go like double the single dip to a common drain to a common source. That might be one possibility. Okay. Uh, like what is the? How do you calculate the gain of the ADM? Is it just within this band, right? Yeah. You don't care. A zero. And then, so we just well, then as long as it hits 1,000, it passes the specs because it because it's only the figure of merit how long this is, right? The figure of merit is not. not yeah, how the long spec is that spec is yeah spec is A zero is your DC gain. Then you're worried about the 3 dB point. So that's not in the specs though, right? It's not, it's not why the FOM is worth a lot more this time. What's worth? FLM is, that was just. How long is it? Because it's easy to read specs this time. Yeah, because you did it. Can you give us some reasonable values for the FLM? Like last time we were kind of just lost on what to go for. What would a mediocre design have? <laughs> what can you look at? Remember this GM over C thing I told you about? The gain bandwidth product. Oh, yes. oh yeah. So the gain bandwidth product of these kinds of stages is like GM over C, right? Uh -huh. You want a big one? And so you kind of know what, figure out what the C you have is, figure out what your minimum C you can live with, figure out what your GM is, figure out how much your gain is, and you can figure out what the bandwidth can be. So you want, you want, oh. Sort of give you a rough way to figure out what a reasonable gain. If, if it's sort of given what the, you have to figure out effectively what you think the capacitance you needs want the to. Gain bandwidth product to be huge. Yeah. But, then, but this is kind of limited by the transistor, right? So, so you calculate for for a GM for a given transistor a certain amount of current, you'll get a GM. As you increase the current, GM goes up, gain bandwidth product goes up. So. Uh, can I ask a quick question also? Sure. The lecture, it was uh, the first circuit in the two common sources. Okay. Did you uh, start the project yet? Uh, I thought about it.
tried it. <laughs> Where'd it go? Yeah. Not there. 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 Do we have enough to calculate if I can calculate the capacitances right now? Okay, what is the question? You have the W and L. I can draw it. How about like, how about PSAS? CPDO, CPDO, I thought that was given. For your RN, you had a gate source. For, for, for the, the second stage. ZM, right? That's why I'm asking. Gate to source. And then you had a millerize yeah. of the gate drain. Right? So both of them are equivalently going from gate to ground. Yeah. How come when we millerize this first stage, on the output we're also going to get something well, I guess those are insignificant though. down? How come this capacitor doesn't affect the input? It does. It's all part of it. That's what I'm saying. It's all part of it. Everything that goes to ground this node, which is anything here, 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 everywhere. So does the output, is the output resistance, of the output impedance of this is yeah, but then the they gave it to us. They actually it's have parallel with the input impedance of that. Okay. Are we given for the project? Are we given enough um, information to can, can calculate the the capacitances right now? What's missing? Like, C, do we? Because, like, on the homework, we were given given CGDO is equal to X. It's, then, it's not there. It should be the same same homework. Uh, it should be okay. I'll, I'll check. Let's check and make sure. It should be. It should same model we had last time, right? Is it the same spice model? Look at the spice model. CJ, there's a CJ gate. And there's a CGDO, oh, should be. There is? There should be. Yeah, look, if there's not, let me know. Do we hand calc and actually hand calc the report, or can we just actually put in something like MATLAB or MATLAB to make the APC change the parameters? The hand, there's going to be one poll. I want to see what parameters, you figured out where that poll is and how to hand calc. You don't have to do a hand. Yeah, it's easy, right? It'll be like GM and R out or something like that, right? Yeah, so you just want to see that one full thing? Yeah. It's like less than a page of the equation. Yeah. Oh, okay. I get you. Okay. Feedback. Here we go. Okay, so a couple things about the project. Um, as you saw, you should got the messages. Um, not asking for you to do hand calculations of all the DC stuff like you did last time. You don't need to do that. Just go after that low frequency pole and show me that you figured out where it is and what it's a function of. So that, that's basically so the, the the project should be a lot shorter this time. You don't need to do all that DC stuff, right? And just the I think we said two pages or a page. I forget what was what do you say? Two pages? One one page? Doesn't say okay, I'll I'll we'll put that on the website. I think I, I think just what like maybe max two pages of discussion of how you minimize the FOM and talk about your circuit, whatever, right? So it'll be you know a lot less of that kind of. It's too hard to grade that stuff. I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't. Do that. Okay. Feedback. Okay, I've told you what this course is about a bunch of times. We start off with DC analysis. We went to small signal analysis. We went to frequency response. And then we're going to do feedback. And here we start with feedback. And as soon as we do with feedback, we'll take feedback plus frequency response, plus DC analysis, plus small signal. You put them all together and you get stability. Okay? So that's kind of what's happened. So now we're doing the next, sort of the last of the topics that we sort of do individually. And then we stick it all together. Okay? And so um, this is got has some very complicated aspects to it. And I'll tell you what I'll tell you where the problem's gonna arise and we'll just do work through it by examples, okay? But here's the problem. This is the basic feedback network and this is something it's you know, there's courses on this, right? You know, control theory. You have a signal that goes forward, a for, this is the most simple form of control loop. You have a signal that goes forward, V in to V out. There's a feedback amplifier, okay, that senses the output, multiplies it by some factor, and subtracts it from the input to create an error signal. So the error, we call this error, okay, I'll abbreviate that with VE, okay, V epsilon in this case. 
is what you create through this feedback network. That then goes into some amplifier, and typically what we think of this, we call this the basic amplifier in this forward path, okay? And typically we like to have this lots of gain. So this is what you've been designing so far this year, is this basic amplifier. What we're going to add to this now is we're going to take that output, go through another network, and subtract it off from the input. So that's the sort of the change we've added, okay? This is negative feedback, because this, this will assume that we have positive A and positive F, and it comes in subtracted off, so there's a negative feedback loop here. When it becomes positive is when we have the problems with stability, and of course it can go positive because there's poles in this basic amplifier, which will flip the sign and make it turn positive. So we have to deal with that issue, and we'll talk about how we do that. But before we do that, let's just analyze this feedback network, sort of frequency independent. So we're kind of jumping back to what we did early in the year, where we analyzed things that were sort of the DC response, in effect. Okay, we're back to sort of forgetting frequency response for the next couple weeks. Okay. Now, here's what's difficult about this feedback stuff. If this signals were always voltages in and voltages out, this feedback analysis would be relatively quite straightforward. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depends how you want to look at it, what we will do is not just sense voltages. We will also sense currents. We will not only amplify voltages, we'll also amplify currents. So this variable here, which is kind of a new, I guess, you know, some Greek thing, can be either a current or a voltage. So that means these basic amplifiers can be a a current amplifier, it could be a current input to a current output, it can be a current input to a voltage output, which is a trans-resistance amplifier, it can be a voltage input to a voltage output, which is a voltage amplifier, which you've been designing all this term so far, or it can be a voltage input to a current output, which is a transconductance amplifier. There's four possibilities. Voltage in, voltage in, current in, voltage out, or current out. If this is a voltage in here, and let's say this is a current out, that means the input to our feedback amplifier is sensing a I in feedback, is sensing a current, and it's feeding out a voltage, because it has to subtract, if this is a voltage, this is error, this is V in, so if I have an input voltage, I have to, I, I can't difference a voltage with a current, so I have to have my feedback amplifier has to be consistent with what my input to my basic amplifier is, so this is V out of the feedback network. So if it's a voltage output here, it has to be a voltage here. If it's a current output here, then it has to be a current into my into my um, basic amplifier. Okay. It's that complication dealing with. So you, what we're going to do is analyze what looking from this from the ports. In other words, I'll look R out of this circuit with this feedback stuff inside of it, and we'll calculate what R out is. We'll also calculate what R in is. We'll calculate the gain. Let me just work with voltages for a second here. We'll calculate the, let's say it was voltage in to voltage output <coughs> network. We'll cal calculate V out over V in with the feedback. So I call this the closed, so there's a bunch of names here. So get these names all straight. We call this the basic amplifier, and its equation is, for this case, let's say it's a voltage output, it will be V out is equal to A times the error voltage, which is coming into it. Okay. The error voltage is equal to V in minus V out of the feedback network. V out of the feedback network is equal to F, the feedback factor, we call F the feedback factor, times V in of the feedback network, which is equal to F times V out of the basic amplifier, or, F, or the whole, of the whole loop, actually. It's V out of the whole circuit. Okay? So you got basic amplifier gain, you got feedback factor, F, you have closed loop gain. Closed loop gain is the gain after we close the feedback loop. 
Then we have open loop gain. Open loop gain is A. It's the gain of the basic amplifier equals gain of the basic amplifier. I mean, I've drawn these to look very equivalent, but this is where the, all the act, action is. This is the transistors. Generally, our feedback amplifier is a passive network. It'll just be some resistors and could be some capacitors, but generally some sort of resistor network will be our feedback. Generally passive. So this is generally passive. Doesn't have to be. And this is the active part. This is where we have our transistors. We'll talk about why we do this, do it this way in a second. Okay, there's another fact, another one. There's a loop. Notice there's a loop going on here. I go through the A, I come in the output, I go through the feedback amplifier, and I can sort of come back again through this differencing network. The gain forward is A. The gain coming back is F, and I get to this where we do this differencing. So that's A times F is the loop gain. So I have open loop gain, which is the basic amplifier gain. I have loop gain, which is AF. I have closed loop gain, which is V out over V in, which is the gain with the loop closed. I have feedback factor F. Yeah, that's what I got. <laughs> so, yeah. How'd I get that? The closed loop gain is the most important thing. So, I mean, let's take let's take a circuit you've probably seen, okay? Let's use a, a ideal amplifier. Okay, so we have this, so this is generally how we use these things, right? R1, R2, okay. So this is the basic amplifier. So this is our op amp. So op amps are the basic amplifier, okay? Has a gain A. Here's the feedback network. So here's, this is, a, a, this is voltage sensing, right? So we're sensing the output. So this is the beginning of the feedback network right there. So this is V in of the feedback network. Okay. And here's V out of the feedback network right there. Okay. Right. The error is right here. And you can see that the error, V error, is equal to V in minus V out of the feedback network just like it should be. So what's F for this circuit? F for this circuit, if we look at the feedback network by itself, so this is V out feedback, this is V in feedback, this is R2 and this is R1. So F is equal to V out feedback over V in feedback. So it's a voltage divider, right? Which is simply going to be R2 over R1 plus R2. Right? That's the ratio. This is the input, this is the output. The signal's going this way, right? So it's just a ratio divider. So the loop gain for this circuit, T, would be equal to a times F, which would be, let's call this equal to A0, which is the gain of the basic amplifier, times R2 over R1 plus R2. The closed loop gain, your question, finally, I get there, is V out over V in, which is the ratio of this to this, with all this feedback stuff inside there. So this is the closed loop gain. A0 is the open loop gain. The reason we say that is because if we open the loop, we break the feedback, 
what do we see the ratio between here and here? It's V out over V in without the feedback. That's the open loop. So open means just cutting that feedback. Okay. Now, how do you analyze these circuits? The way you analyze these circuits is when you did ideal op amp analysis in I don't know what class it was, 105 or something like that, right? You assumed A0 goes to infinity. If A0 is infinity and V out is finite, right, over A0, this is time equals V error. But if A0 goes to infinity, what does V error go to? V error goes to zero. So as the gain of this gets higher and higher, this error voltage gets smaller and smaller. And we generally work in the limit of the, where this gain is very large. When the gain is very large for ideal op app analysis, that means that this voltage and this voltage are the same. Right? So that means, and we know this voltage, so we can do a little equation right here, right? So if V, um, the voltage at this point right here is going to be V out, okay, times um, R1, R2, over R1 plus R2, okay, that's by this voltage divider path. But from this equation right here, I can see that this node also has to be equal to V, v equal to V in, right? V error goes to zero, so this voltage has to be the same. So this node is V in, but it's also equal to V out through this feedback factor, path rather. So I can now calculate the closed loop gain. It's V out over V in is equal to R1 plus R2 over R2, or equal to 1 plus R1 over R2. So this is the closed loop gain. So this is exactly true if this gain is infinite. And this is really nice, right? Because we can then what this means is we can set gains to be very accurate just by ratios of resistors. So that's really nice. Right? We can also use capacitor feedback too. And that's actually done more often on chips because you don't like to drive resistance with CMOS, as you know, right? You'd rather drive capacitors, you know, though it's a frequency response issue, you don't have to provide all that current, right? So quite often what we do is instead of using resistors here, we'll use capacitor feedback. Yes? Push the button? No, work? Okay, just talk loud. The air, okay, so what will hap what's going to happen is, I mean, why did it go to zero? What's it? V error, okay, I, by equations, I showed V out. What's V out equal to? V error is the, the input, is this voltage across the input, right? It's equal to A times V error, right? And I'm saying air, if V out is finite, okay, A zero is very, very large. V error is going to be very, very small. Okay? How does that happen? It happens by feedback. What happens is, if this gain's large, this feedback will drive this node to be equal to this voltage here. You put a voltage here, and what the feedback, negative feedback does, it'll take this voltage and make it equal to that one. Yeah? Okay, so that's what we're going to analyze now. So we'll, we'll see that, okay? I mean, in actual fact, as this gain is not infinite, then the answer won't be exactly this. It'll be close to it. But that's what we're going to do in a second, okay? So you'll see that, okay? So you get the picture? So this is why I like lots of gain, because it makes this answer really easy. If it's not so much gain, then we've got to do something that will... We've got to take this into account. So that's what I'm going to do here. So let's... Um, So let's go back to our, let's now, let's analyze the same thing, okay? But let's let A0 not be infinite. So let's do this a little more accurately. I, I can't use that ideal approximation that I did, okay? So V air is equal to, well, I can, I'll just write it, okay? V in minus 
V feedback, V output of the feedback network, right? And v output of the feedback network is equal to F times V in of the feedback network. And F for this case is equal to this divider. Okay, so it's a ratio from here to here. Right? Okay, then we have V error is equal, I can replace this, this into this, I get equal to Vn minus F times Vn of the feedback network, right? I'm sorry. Okay. V out is equal to the open loop gain times V error, okay? Now, oh, I, and I should have to replace this. The V in of the feedback network is equal to the V out of the whole circuit, right? So that's VO. So this is, let's call this V out, V out, okay? All right? V out is equal to A times V error. V error is equal to this. So I'm take this here, substitute it into this. I end up with V out is equal to V in minus F. Wait. Oh, there, there it is right there. I got it all already. Oh, no, here it is. I'm sorry. V air. I have to. So V air is equal to V out over A0. So I set this equal to V out over A0. Now I have just V in and V outs here, okay? I solve that and I end up with this. AV, which is equal to V out over V in, closed loop gain, you just solve this little thing right here, end up looking like this. 1 over F times T over 1 plus T, where T is equal to A0F, okay? A, so let's look at what, so this is what I claim the closed loop gain is. Now remember this first problem, I did this by hand here. I said F was equal to RT over one R1 plus R2. Notice what this is equal to. If A0F is much, much larger than 1, let's assume A0F is much, much larger than 1, then the T over 1 plus T term goes away. The gain goes to be equal to 1 over F. So A sub V should be 1 over F, and 1 over F is 1 over R2, R1 plus R2, which is actually equal to 1 plus R1 over R2 that I calculated before. This is for T going to infinity. For finite T, if I don't have T equal to infinity, or A0 equal to infinity, it's actually the A0 F factor we have to look at. It's a loop gain. That's why we, that's why we talk about loop gain. That's the important number. You can see what this answer will come out. It'll be a little less than 1 over F. So let's say T is only equal to 10. So then our answer AV will be equal to 1 plus R1 over R2, that's the 1 over F part, times 10 over 1 plus 10, right? Or 10 elevenths. So I have a 9, we have a 10% error or so if the gain is as low as 10. If the gain's 100, we'll have 1% error. If the gain's 1,000, we'll have 0.1% error. So that tells you what this does with just T. Our next thing I'll calculate is R in, or R, R, I'll see what the resistance is looking into here and looking into here. And we'll do that as a function of these same.